Okay, so in the last video we proved that a permutation can either be written as an even number of transpositions or an odd number of transpositions, but not both. And now we're going to go ahead and tackle Proposition 2, which states that every transposition can be expressed as the product of an odd number <coughs> of adjacent transpositions. So every transposition can be expressed as the product of an odd number of adjacent transpositions. That's this proposition here. Let's get started. Note, this proposition is obvious enough that a formal proof may obscure the obviousness of its veracity. Rather than provide a formal proof, we will resort to a careful demonstration, a kind of pseudo-proof that will likely serve better to illustrate the truth of the claim. Anyhow, here it is. Let K and M be in the set 1 through n, such that k is less than m, and consider the transposition km. So k is switching places with m there. This transposition has the effect of moving k to the mth position and moving m to the kth position. First, we will concern ourselves with moving m to the kth position by using a product of a certain number of adjacent transpositions. Observe the following. Okay, so here we've just listed out all the numbers in order, right? One, two, three, all the way to k, and then moving beyond k, all the way to m, and then moving beyond that all the way to n. So I've just put them in order. That's it. All right. Uh, notice the position of k and m, and uh, notice m next to m minus one. By interchanging m and m minus 1, we obtain the following ordering, right? 1, 2, 3, all of it's in order, except we've switched m and m minus 1. So we've moved m back to the left. Okay. Notice m is next to m minus 2 now. All right. By interchanging m and m minus 2, we obtain the following ordering, except we've moved m to the left again. Okay. By successively interchanging terms in this matter, a total of m minus k minus 1 times, we obtain the following ordering. So we've moved m all the way over to where we've gone past k. Okay, So we've taken m, moved it over, now it's on the other side of k. Okay. Note that we have moved m to the kth position, right? So k is no longer in what well, was the kth position, right? And we now wish to move k to the mth position. Note that, uh, also note that k itself has been moved to the k plus 1 position, one step closer to the mth position than it was, right? So now m is in the kth position, and since we've pushed k out of the way, we've actually pushed it forward one position, right? So now it's, k is occupying the k plus 1th position now, because we, there's no longer an order, right? Uh, we've moved them out of order. Okay. And uh, hence, we will need one less transposition to move k to the nth position than we needed to move m to the kth position, right? Because in so moving m to the kth position, we pushed it forward one, so it has one less step to go to get to move k over to where m was. All right. So here we are. k is next to k plus 1. By interchanging k and k plus 1, we obtain the following ordering, where we pushed k in front of k plus 1, over to the right. By successively interchanging adjacent, adjacent terms in this manner, k minus m minus 2 times, remember that's one transposition less than before, we obtain the following ordering, 1, 2, 3, all the way to m. Right, we've switched m and k. It goes all the way to k, all the way to n. This is the very transposition we were hoping to obtain. Okay. Since we have transposed adjacent terms a total of m minus k minus 1 plus m minus k minus 2, which is equal to 2 times m minus k minus 3 times, which is an odd number, in order to obtain the transposition km, we may conclude that any transposition may be written as an odd number of adjacent transpositions. 
Right, so the idea here is notice that we, we've counted basically the number of times we've had to do an adjacent transposition to get the ordering we want. And it turns out that it's an odd number, right? Uh, as you can see, 2 times m minus k, that's an even number. But once you subtract the odd number, 3, it's an odd number now. So there you go. Odd number, QED. All right, now that that's proved, um, every transposition can be expressed as a product of an odd number of adjacent transpositions. We can move on from here. Uh, note, since every permutation can be written as the product of transpositions and, by proposition 2, every transposition can be written as the product of adjacent transpositions, uh, then every permutation can be written as the product of adjacent transpositions. So, if a permutation P can only be written as an even number of transpositions, then it can only be written as an even number of adjacent transpositions. Right? If P can only be written as the odd as an odd number of transpositions, then P can only be written as an odd number of adjacent transpositions. Okay, so one more time. Since every permutation can be written as the product of transpositions, right, so given a permutation, I can write it in terms of transpositions, and by proposition two, every transposition can be written as the product of a can be written as the product of adjacent transpositions, then every permutation can be written as a product of adjacent transpositions. Okay? Now the question is, is that an odd or even number? Well, if a permutation P can only be written as an even number of transpositions, then it can only be written as an even number of adjacent transpositions. Why? Because if I can write P as an even number of transpositions, right? and each of those transpositions can only be written as an odd number of adjacent transpositions, then I have an even number times an odd, which is even, right? So then it can only be written as an even number of adjacent transpositions. If P can only be written as an odd number of transpositions, right, then I have an odd number of transpositions, each of which can be written as an odd um, product, a product of an odd number of adjacent transpositions. Odd times odd is odd again, okay? Then P can only be written as an odd number of adjacent transpositions. That's the point. Sorry to belabor it. Okay. Uh, and next time we'll move on and then discuss inversions and parity. So that's the last one. See you next time.